You know I love to give the people what they want and I got a few requests recently for a stability shoe roundup after I did that best daily trainer from every brand roundup. So today I wanted to take a look at the best stability shoes out there today for every type of run. So everything from daily training to recovery runs to tempo runs to race day. I took a look at all the stability shoes on the market and rounded them up and I'm gonna bring you the best in each category. Before we dive into the best stability picks, if you haven't checked out the Running Shoe Matcher tool, go to runningshoematcher.com. This is a really cool tool we built that matches you with the best running shoe for you based on your answers to five questions. So you go in there, you can put in whether you need a stability shoe or not, if you like your shoes soft or firm, what type of shoe you're looking for, and we'll match you with the best shoes for you. So it's live right now and it's free. You can check it out at runningshoematcher.com. I will also put the link in the description below. All right, let's get into it. So first up, I wanted to briefly touch on the two main forms of stability that we see in shoes today. So the first main form of stability that we see in shoes is what's been in stability shoes for a long time, and it's using these medial posts on the inside of shoes to hold that over pronating foot in place. So this is that traditional form of stability. It's a bit more intrusive and it also adds a bit more weight to the shoe because it's adding a post onto the shoe that wouldn't otherwise be there. So this type of shoe is a more aggressive form of stability and it works for runners who have that severe over pronation and need prescriptive correction for their running form. Now the second type of stability that we see in shoes is more mild or moderate and it is inherent stability. So shoes with inherent stability elements use wider platforms, they have more stable foams, and their stack heights and construction of that midsole foam and upper is formulated in a way where we don't need to add those posts, but it is going to be a bit more stable because that wider base and that firmer foam. These types of shoes may have minor prescriptive elements, for example, the Saucony Endorphin Shift has a plastic heel clip out back, but they do not use posts. These shoes are commonly referenced as mild stability shoes or inherent stability shoes. So in this roundup, I've identified both traditional and inherent stability shoes. If you are a serious overpronator, you're likely going to want to go for that traditional stability type of shoe. All right, let's get into it. So first up, we have the Daily Trainer. Now, when I do best of videos with Daily Trainers, I like bringing two different recommendations here, one softer recommendation and one firmer recommendation. I personally like to have both soft and firm Daily Trainers in my own rotation as a way to cycle through different types of shoes, work different muscles in my legs. I know some runners only have one Daily Trainer in their rotation and they'll choose soft versus firm based on their own preferences. So my pick here for a soft stability daily trainer is the Asics Gel Kayano 30. This is a max stack stability shoe that uses inherent stability or mild stability to stabilize that foot. Now this has a thick 40 millimeter stack of that Asics FF Blast Plus foam in there and it's also a gel unit in the heel. This is gonna be a really good choice for you if you like that softer max cushion type of shoe like a Saucony Triumph or an Asics Gel Nimbus but you realize that you need some more stability because those types of max stack shoes with those soft booms tend to be on the more unstable side. This is gonna have a nice plush and cushioned feel underfoot. It's not gonna be the fastest option. It's also coming in at 10.7 ounces for that US Men's 9, so a bit heavier, but if you like that really protective feeling for your daily miles, then go ahead and check out the Kayano. Now for the firm daily trainer, my pick here is the Saucony Guide 16. This uses Saucony's Power Run Foam, which is an EVA based blend there in the midsole. It's in the Saucony Ride and it's in the Saucony Endorphin Shift in Canvara. It gives a nice solid traditional firmer ride. It's not gonna be the most exciting, but it is pretty responsive when you pick up the pace and it's gonna be a good option if you don't like that mushy feeling underfoot. This is a more moderate stability shoe like that Kayano, but it does come in in the eight ounce range, so it is a bit lighter option. So if you like a daily trainer to be on the more nimble side, on the firmer, snappier side for maybe some slight up-tempo work, then go ahead and check out the Guide 16. I right, guess next up we have the Tempo shoe and that is going to be the Saucony Tempest. Now this is a really exciting stability shoe because it's one of the only, if not the only stability shoe on the market that uses a super foam. So we see in the midsole here, a dual foam compound. So the first foam in there is Saucony's Power Run, that firmer EVA that we talked about that's just in the guide. And the second foam is Saucony's Power Run PB, which is the PIVA based compound that we see on the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 and the Pro 3. So what that Power Run does is it's 
stabilizes the heel area of the shoe while that piva drop in in the forefoot area and through the midfoot area adds more of that responsive bed of foam so that when you want to push the pace pick it up into marathon pace or below you're going to get a nice toe off you're going to get a nice balance and you're going to get a nice rocker feeling as well due to the way that the shoe is set up so this is a great shoe for any of those marathon pace workouts if you're doing marathon training you also can use it as a daily trainer have a bit more of an exciting fun ride and if you're a serious over pronator and you don't want to go for a super shoe on race day this is a viable racing option as well all right guys, next up we have the long running shoe and that is going to be the New Balance 860 B13. Now this has a more moderate stack height. There's 27 millimeters of foam in the heel and 17 millimeters of foam in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. But what's great about this foam is that it's right dead center in the middle of that soft firm continuum. And these are the types of shoes that I love to use on long runs because over that long haul, you don't want something super firm and snappy that's gonna turn out to be harsh at the end of those miles. And you also don't want something that's too soft and mushy that's gonna make it harder to get that turnover in the later stages of those long efforts. The 860 is gonna be a very cushioned option for you. It also is more on the traditional stability side, which in my experience is a good choice for longer runs because that's when you tend to overpronate the most. If you are an overpronator is when you're tired, right? And at the last 30 minutes of a two hour effort, you're gonna be very fatigued and very tired. So going with something with a bit more stability and structure like the 860 is a good choice. Now the benefit of that lower stack height again is that it is gonna come in on the lighter side of the spectrum. So although it's not gonna have that massive stack of foam, it is gonna be a bit easier to turn over the legs as you're getting into that fatigue stage of running. All right, guys, next up, we have the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. Now, this is my favorite shoe from the past year from Saucony. Yes, even above the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, because I think it executes on its brief better than any other shoe out there executes on its brief, at least from Saucony. And that is to provide cushioned, comfortable, and relaxed miles, which is why we're highlighting it here as the best recovery running stability shoe. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this shoe uses an enhanced inherent stability setup with a bit of prescriptive stability in that plastic heel clip we're seeing around back. So there is a very tall stack of that power run foam. There's a 39 millimeter stack in the heel and a 35 millimeter stack in the forefoot for that four millimeter drop. And there's an aggressively rockered platform. So again, that's gonna give you that nice smooth and cushioned feel that makes it super easy to run at a relaxed pace. This is a great recovery running choice for those days when you're super beat up. I like to use a bit of a firmer shoe for those days. I've been using the Gel Nimbus recently and it's just starting to feel too mushy, too soft for me underfoot. It's not the greatest choice for me on those days when I'm really tired because it's harder to turn over the legs. For something like the Shift 3 due to its lightweight and that rocker and that firmer foam, it's going to be a bit easier to run on those days when you're feeling beat up. All right, guys, last year we have the race day shoe. Now, in the stability segment, there is not yet a dedicated carbon fiber racer that is designed as a stability shoe, but there are options out there that are more stable than others. What I will say off the bat first here is that the Vaporfly is likely not going to be a great choice if you have serious overpronating needs. I love the Vaporfly and it's the top tier racer out there. It's still my favorite racer out there, but that heel tends to be a bit narrower than most. And that ZoomX foam is still really unstable and not the best if you're gonna need some more support in that heel and ankle area. I've also used the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and that will likely be the best option for you if you want a carbon fiber plated shoe but need some support. So the Power Run PB foam in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is a bit firmer inherently than that ZoomX foam, which will give some nice stability in the platform. And that heel is just a lot wider than we're seeing the heel foam in the Vaporfly. Another good choice is the Hoka Rocket X if you want something that's a tad more aggressive than the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. This is a more recent shoe to hit the market and it has this unique spoon plate shape up in the forefoot. I would recommend the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, but if you do want to mix it up and try something a bit different, then there is the Hoka Rocket X. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are the best stability shoes for every type of run. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And I'll make sure to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.